Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Andreas Schilling. He, he said to call him Andrew, but uh, hello, Dr. Andrew Schilling. Um, he has a PhD from the University of Bamberg and uh, runs Excellent Solutions. I'm really excited about this talk. There's so much text out there. So uh, with that, let's welcome Dr. Andreas Schilling. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my talk on how to manage 2.5 gigabytes of unstructured documents. Um, before we start, let's just one mistake. Uh, this is not my company. <laughs> I'm working there. <laughs> Get that out of the way. All right. This talk is structured into four main parts. First, I would like to give you some context about myself and excellent solutions and detail the key challenges we have been struggling with. Next, I would like to detail our solution and the steps on how to get there. Finally, I would like to conclude by presenting you some of the final results we could achieve and summarize once again the three main steps for dealing with such a huge amount of data. So, as Alex told you already, I studied at Bamberg University Information Systems and uh, visited Harriet Watt University. After I graduated, I pursued my PhD in Information Systems and my key areas are software modeling, engineering, distributed systems, and analysis of big data. And since January 2016, I'm senior software engineer at Excellent Solutions. Excellent Solutions is a consultant and software development company which is located in three German cities, which are Darmstadt, Stuttgart, Ulm, and Munich and it has about 130 employees. So, what was the key challenge? Well, all started with a nice event. Um, a client uh, from the industrial sector approached us and asked us to make a draft for a specification for various new features for his um, globally used point of sale systems. So, this, ev this event was quite nice for us, um, however, there had been some caveats because um, the client, of course, said, okay, all this new specification um, should be built on the existing specification. And we thought, okay, yeah, that's possible. What do we have to deal with? One document, two documents? Uh, it's a little bit special. Um, the core functionality was introduced several years ago, and since then, um, the system was developed in iteratively via change requests. Okay, and how many change requests are there? One, two, three, uh, about 250. Okay, so we had to deal with about 250 change requests, which were not specified in completion, but in delta notation. So if a use case changed in one, um, in one change request, not the whole use case was described, but only one sentence which was actually changed. Yeah, then the files were quite large, 50 to 60 megabytes, and, uh, well, of course, the challenge which, challenges which arose from this situation were there was a high ramp-up effort for new team members. We had to give them basically one or two weeks alone to dive into the existing documentation and get a sense of how the various functional components are interconnected with each other. Moreover, the truth about a feature is not in a single place, but distributed all over the documents, because as I told you, there was one slim basic specification and then all those CRs upon that. So a use case could have been, cha could have been introduced initially and then changed about 100 times. So what is the current state? And then, this is my favorite point. Uh, because of the complexity of the documents, um, Word even had to, had to open them within one minute. So it was 
quite risky to open them because in best case you just wait one minute, in the worst case you crash your entire system. Um, and so we, <laughs> with all those challenges, we asked ourselves, okay, is there a better way or can there be a better way on how to deal with all these challenges? And we set together three key target areas which we wanted to solve. This was bundle. We want to have all relevant information on one place. And if we cannot get the information which we could integrate into this place, we want to have access to the external data sources. Is it by database connection? Is it somewhere else? But the user should always go to one place. Second, structure. There should be a simple way for a user to see how the specification elements, such as use cases, are interconnected with each other. And moreover, it should be simple to navigate to those components. It should be no longer be necessary to ask yourself, do I really need to open this file to read the specification? Because I already have several tabs open in my internet browser and I have various open documents which are not safe. So this should be in the past. And finally, we want to actively assist the user. We want to derive recommendations of the selected element and identify mistakes in the specification which have been there by typos, for example, or conceptual mistakes, that there is still reference some functionality, for example, which was already removed several change requests ago. So, how did we get there? Well, the overview of our solution approach includes three main steps. So the first one is really, really difficult because you need to get your specification documents in machine-readable text and preferably into structured text, such as JSON files. That means extract, ta extract text, extract tables. Yeah, merged cells are your friends. Second, markup. You do not believe how many specification documents are there where clients just use the markup functionality of Word to make a circle on one particular point to highlight this point. You will lose the information if you cannot extract this information too. And then images. And believe me, there are a lot of different image formats which can be found in those files. And then convert the extracted specification documents in machine and human readable HTML code and transform those HTML files into JSON documents. Second, identify relationships. Identify your keywords within your chapters using regular expressions. Second, determine direct and indirect pre and successors of the particular specification element. In the case which I already described, so a use case is um, referenced by several other use cases, you can make up that graph and it could begin with a dialogue probably. Derive common patterns of change. So we have that huge amount of CR specification. Why not derive patterns on functional elements. Which functional elements are always changed together? Can we extract lessons for our specification of those patterns? Finally, visualization. So endless scrolling is your friend because then data is asynchronously loaded into your browser and the user gets a fluent interface. Visualize representations of relationships of those call graphs, of those use, use cases, to give, uh, give the user an impression of where he is currently in this call graph. And finally, present reading recommendations. If you are in this place in the call graph, you're most likely to, sh you're most likely to read this chapter next. In the following, I would like to detail each of this, these steps in more detail. So, how can we get specification to JSON? Well, my first lesson is 
built, if possible, on existing frameworks. There are really good frameworks such as Python DocX, which gives you really good possibilities to iterate through DocX documents. There is Python Mammoth, which also exports the formatting of your text. So if there are phrases highlighted, Mammoth can also get along with that. Then there is the classic Pandoc, which you probably already used to convert your tech into PDF or some other files, such as docx. And there is the LibreOffice functionality to convert files. And there is, if you really want to deep into Visual Basic Programming, PyWin32. Um, the problem with all those is um, there is no, no library which fulfills all of our needs. What does this mean? Python .x, I said, it's really good library. I really, I really like it, but it does not extract merged cells, and it does not properly extract um, images reliably if you have some um, special image formats. And inline, uh, inline markups, such as the circle I uh, already mentioned, are not considered as well. Python Mambo is also good, but also does not consider markup. And we had really some problems getting them to use our complex documents because they cannot treat the winding characters. Winding is a, a font which was initially introduced by Microsoft about 10 years ago and which is still used to represent though um, an arrow if you put, if you type minus minus uh, greater, um, yeah, to encode this arrow. Uh, LibreOffice didn't even open our complex files and crashed entirely. And macros could also not work because we even had some special tables which produced using uh, Visual Basic index out of bounds. This was quite funny. Okay, so all those libraries which work for most, or should work for most of you if you have no special formatting needs, um, did not work for us. So we had to do it on our own. So what could we do? So we sat together and said, okay, so all those libraries did not work, but there is one program which could open our files, and this was MS Word. So why not use MS Word to export HTML? So the first step was to get all files into docx. Hey, we could use um, PyWin32 and the VBA, uh, functionality to do this conversation, pretty easy. Second, we used the save as functionality in Word to convert the currently displayed docx file into HTML text. This produced not only um, to create an image folder, a separate image folder with all those image and markup um, structures, but also um, one HTML file, but this HTML file is really hard readable. So you have to skip away all the CSS and you need to do some sanity um, validations, such as replace all winding characters with UTF-8. But if you can get over that, you're fine. And the third step is then to iterate using Beautiful Soap through those created HTML files and derive the heading and all the text below the heading as value. Identify relationships. Um, we had, we, we've been lucky in one way, and this is that our specification elements all were prefixed by special um, by syllable. syllable. Um, for example, DLG for dialogue and UC for use case. Um, so we iterated through all the extracted text and we created tuples for the source, which was in this case the heading, which was the particular specification element, and all keywords which were found in this chapter. So for example, in this case, we have in this case, we have, this is a chapter, 
and this is a keyword and this is a chapter and those are keywords and we created tuples which link them together. If possible, enrich your tuples with meta information such as how often does this target occur in the particular chapter. And if you do that, the next step is not far away because with all that tuple array, with that array of tuple information, you can produce a graph using network X. And here you go, you have your first call graph enriched with meta information such as how often is this um, arrow mentioned in the specification. And the more it is mentioned, the more important it is probably. Identify relationships across documents. Um, here we again used the extracted text information and pandas. So in the first case, we iterated through each of our 250 documents and extracted a distinct list of the found keywords. And then in a second step, for each found keyword, we compiled a list of those elements which mostly occur together with the particular element. So for example, in this case, DLG shopping cart, um, we check all the CRs and check which elements most frequently occur with DLG shopping cart. In this case, um, you have check data, which is mentioned eight times, which is also in eight times changed if DLG shopping cart is changed. Um, check pricing is five times, is in five cases changed if DLG shopping cart is changed. So you get a feeling on how your data across the files is related. And then finally, you can introduce some weighting to account for recent architectural shifts. So for example, if our client um, introduced two years ago a major architectural shift where he said dialogue elements should never call dialogue elements directly but only via use cases. Um, we ac can account for that. For example, if you have that, the, the implementation date as a metadata and then um, yeah, calculate the ratio of past days since, um, since the change occurred. So you can prioritize recent changes and deprioritize old changes. Okay, so how do we put that all together? Um, you, you probably guessed we have to do some drafts because uh, we are also under NDA, but I can give you an impression on what the user interface looks like. We have endless scrolling, as already mentioned, using jQuery waypoints. We have navigatable keywords because um, a good, um, a, a very useful advantage is not only to identify the relationships via call graph, but also make the identified keywords uh, stuck out of your specification and make them anchor points so the user can click on it and gets navigated to the particular section in your document. Um, we can integrate external data sources um, such as Excel files using ala SQL. And uh, most importantly, we can we used NDB for full text search capabilities. So um, the really nice feature of this is that it's all within your browser on local storage, meaning it can be used in a serverless environment. Um, basically, every time you open your browser, all the JSON files get indexed into your local DB and you can use um, full text search to get the particular phrases you're interested in. And this in less than seven seconds in our case. Chapter navigation, well, we provide the user with a, um, with a tree navigation structure of the particular headings and the chapters. Um, so he can, he can click here as well as within the specification. So how do we present the relationships? Um, in addition, we give the user a sidebar with dynamic width, so he can choose to um, study the call graph side by side, as well as 
take the whole screen for the call, to understand the call graph. Moreover, um, we use Cytoscape in order to provide this call graph because D3 had some difficulties um, if one node had multiple parents. Cytoscape can handle that. And using Dagra layout, um, the user really gets a good visualization of all the dependencies. Moreover, we use a combination of hidden and visual layers to give the user some kind of interactive, uh, inter interactivity. So um, the particular element is highlighted here uh, when the user scrolls here as well as if the user uh, decides to increase the complexity of the graph to see not only the direct successor and precessor of a particular use case, but also the levels two, three, and four below or above the successor, um, yeah, he can expand his call graph dynamically. And we provide interactive recommendations for the particular chapter the user reads at the moment. Okay, so what did we achieve with this? Well, let's have a look regarding our key target areas. Bundle. The user only has to wait 6.5 seconds to load all relevant data into his browser, and then he gets full text search over all those files. It is stable, so no longer has a user be, to be afraid of whether this file crashes the system or not. And we can integrate external data sources, such as release schedules, which are provided by Excel sheets. Structure. We have interactive keywords. The user can click, make the specification live it by clicking into it. Full text search. He can only remember a phrase of it. No problem. We can search through all files, through all text um, within milliseconds. And visualize relationships. And the system assists actively the user. So. It improves our planning because now if a client asks us to introduce new functionality for a particular use case, we can better plan, is this a major change for the system or a smaller change? Because we know if there are direct successes of this change affected or indirect successes affected by a particular change. And most importantly, we can identify spelling mistakes in our existing specification as well as in our own drafts, and we know if specification artifacts are still there, but should no longer be there because they should have been removed in the past. So we can ignore them today. Okay, to conclude, um, there are three main steps to achieve and to master 2.5 gigabytes of unstructured specification. First, use existing libraries if possible. Otherwise, use the word function to export your docx file into HTML, but be aware you have to clean up this HTML. You cannot use it by default, or should not use it by default at least. Uh, structure the HTML code by the heading, heading structure into JSON files. Second, identify relationships. Use regular expressions, if possible, to identify the keywords, the key specification elements. Identify relationships between them using tuple notation and enrich them with metadata. And derive patterns of common change between specification elements. Visualize. Endless scrolling is your friend because it allows interactive um, loading the data only if necessary. Cytoscape provides a good way to allow graphs with multiple parents, and NDB can be used as full text search engine to provide full text search in a serverless environment. And most importantly, have fun, because otherwise you're really stuck. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.
Hi. Um, thanks for the great talk. I've uh, seen similar situations, so <laughs> that's what drew me here. Um, you apparently were in a, a comfortable uh, situation in the one way that you had clear naming conventions for the use cases and dialogues. Did you spot any so typos or so that uh, that your matching algorithm didn't work? Yeah. Um, so, just to show you, um, yeah, um, yes, this was a very simple case to present. Um, we were in the lucky choice to have fixed prefixes for our keywords, but as you can imagine, there are always, um, yeah, human caused difficulties because some you, um, some writers of the specification put white space after an underscore or before an underscore, um, small caps or um, um, caps using caps. So there were definitely difficulties. Um, moreover, we also explored the idea to have a whitelist of um, self-extracted keywords and um, match against that whitelist. But um, yeah, we, we said, okay, even with that bias, um, that we might get not all keywords or at least wrong keywords, um, we used the automatic approach and not a manual create a man manually a whitelist against which we match with our algorithms. Uh, I see two aspects in this project. Uh, for one, you build a comfortable viewer for a, a requirement uh, documents, and then somewhat independently, you did the migration of legacy documents into this new system. Um, is new data still entered using this document mess, or are users completely migrated to the new system and use this to uh, create a new documents? So, uh the first question, did we migrate, migrate old documents into uh, new documents? Uh, we do that only for us, um, not for the client, because um, <laughs> if you try to export HTML from those files, you really get fun results. So recommendation, don't do it. First convert it into docx, and then you can uh, export it as HTML. So this was the reason why we did that explicitly. Um, Second question, can we avoid uh, using DOCX uh, entirely? Um, we are currently exploring the possibility to uh, enable the user to dynamically enter um, data into this, as you called it, viewer. Um, so you can kind of a wiki, but um, talks are hard. Uh, clients like to get specification documents which they view in Word. Um, so yeah, it's a process and um, we're definitely uh, on the same line here that it would be best to have some kind of wiki or interactive um, specification. We also explored um, to put it into version control, uh, which we already did. Um, yeah, but this would also allow us to version control the changes. How did you test that your method works? I mean, that you have really all specifications in and all changes? Mm -hmm. Pardon? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, that's not easy. Um, so first, um, we had some experts in our project which did it the hard way and could verify um, the produced graphs whether they match their intuition or not. And second, um, we tested it directly using uh, the system itself. So um, as I told you here, uh, where we um, derived the, the relationships across documents, do that match with, our, with the input call graph, for example. So, is the, so does the 
the system validate itself. But um, yeah, we did that to check against uh, typos and the manual way to ensure the general validity of our approach. Cool, uh, let's thank Dr. Andreas again.